Hi, I'm Katie Williamson, and I work on behavior-centered design tools and trainings here at our B-Center. Presenting after Katie Milkman and Kevin is a tough act to follow, but I will do my best. Uh, earlier today, you learned about behavior-centered design, and just last week, we invited teams from around the world to compete in what we call a behavior-centered design challenge. This is when we work with organizations to create an environmental real-world case and teams then compete to develop a behavioral solution to that. For this challenge, we worked with the Nature Conservancy and Ocean Sewage Alliance to address a real water pollution problem. So here's the challenge by the numbers. There were 14 teams, 61 participants in total, calling in from 16 countries. Over the course of three days, they developed behavioral solutions after learning about the problem. Then last weekend, we had a panel of judges review all of the team's solutions and determine the top three finalists, who you'll hear from in a little bit. So, as you heard, there are eight steps in the BCD journey, and our teams only followed about six of them. They learned about core actors, they studied behavioral motivations and barriers, they wrote hypotheses, developed solutions, and then ultimately a prototype of their favorite solution that they pitched to our judges. So what was the challenge that they were working on? Their challenge was to design a solution without relying on rules and regulations, information, or material incentives that would motivate more residents of Shelter Island to demand action from the town board on water management. So there's a lot to unpack there, so let's really get into it, starting with where is Shelter Island and what's going on there? Shelter Island is in the state of New York in the United States. New York is in the northeast part of the country, as you can see here on the map. If we zoom in a little bit further, we can see at the bottom of New York is an island called Long Island. And at the very end of Long Island is Shelter Island. So it's an island within an island um, that we are addressing for this challenge. What does this place look like? As you can see from the photo here in this aerial shot from above, it's quite beautiful. It's surrounded by water and really defines the characteristics of this place. It's somewhere you can only access by ferry. And there was only about 2,500 full-time residents who live there, although the population fluctuates a lot during the summer months. So it's a really great case place for us to study. But what exactly is the problem going on there? So over the last couple decades, residents and people who have visited Shelter Island have noticed that the level of nitrates in the water has been increasing to some pretty scary levels. Marine life has been dying off, harmful algae blooms are showing up on the beaches, and even the drinking water itself is becoming increasingly unsafe. And the cause of all of this is residential sewage. It's been contaminating all of the local water resources. And while the Nature Conservancy and a group of active local residents have been trying to address the problem, they just haven't had as much success in really making the difference that they need to. They've tried to work with the town board, which is the Shelter Island's governing body, but they just haven't gotten the momentum. That's where we're hoping this challenge can really make a difference. So. Here are the 14 teams. Um, they come from a variety of backgrounds. Some are students, some are practitioners who have been working on behavioral science and design thinking in their careers. The three teams highlighted here are gonna be your finalists today. To so you, as you can see, we had teams from all across the world, um, really spanning all the different continents. Um, and we were really excited by the diversity of teams who joined us for this challenge. The teams were supported by an awesome slate of coaches um, who are all behavioral science or behavioral design experts um, from, from different sectors. And we were really excited to have them join the challenge. In addition to the coaches, you heard that we had a panel of judges. And here they are. They have firsthand experience working on behavioral change as well as water pollution um, firsthand with communities. So what will you see? Um, here's a little bit about the solutions and these videos that we'll show shortly. Each team will have three minutes to tell you about the key resident insights that they developed during their solution. They'll tell you about the solution itself and why they think it's going to work. 
They'll talk about the behavioral insights and the science behind their solution. And they'll also talk about how they accounted for accessibility and equity in their solution. And after these three, you'll get a chance to vote for your favorite. So a little bit more about the criteria that you could use as you're experiencing these videos. These are the criteria that we used for the judges and provided to them as they were reviewing. You might think about how closely do you think the solution maps to the different resident insights that they found? What kind of behavioral theory? Are they using the behavior levers that we talked about in our session yesterday? What is the potential impact of the solution? How feasible is it? Does it really account for the diverse needs of residents? And also how compelling is it and how creative? So some different things you could think about as you are able to see the videos soon. All right, it's time. Here is your task. Um, we're gonna show you those three finalist videos and you can really just take those in um, and decide on your favorite. And then you're gonna see a poll and hop in on the right side of your screen and we're gonna ask you to vote for your favorite team. So we're gonna start with our first team, which is Paramo. Hello, we are Paramo and we will be addressing water pollution on Shelter Island. We have four key insights. The first, the majority of the residents of the island are aware of the water situation, care, and are very motivated no matter their situation. They want the best for the island, their health, and the ecosystem. But the residents lack confidence in the town board, whose role is to carry out the solution, and this is for many reasons. Being this way, residents do not feel motivated to pressure the board into action. On the other hand, the board seems out of reach and out of touch, not part of the us they trust. There is no easy or clear connection or way to contact the board from the resident's perspective, especially for the majority of the population, which is elderly and cannot attend meetings. Past attempts to pressure the board have been unsuccessful and have been based on distant, impersonal, and individual acts. It is important to note that the board is compromised by volunteers who feel they can contribute and want to remain on the resident's good side. Therefore, our solution involves designing a long-term experience and tool that permits a person-to-person -person interaction in the right climate. This includes highlighting existing motivation and building a connection between the residents and the board based on personalization, trust, empathy, and communication that will motivate them and lead to collective action. It begins with an invitation by community leaders to permanent residents to attend an event at Majavak Reserve to come together and reconnect with the island, nature, and each other with experience and goal-sharing activities. The town board is also invited as residents and a key part of the community. This places everyone in the, in the shared and cherished space in nature where differences can be set aside and they can reconnect by sharing experiences, stories, and goals related to the island. Through this emotional and sensory experience, they're able to put faces to names and roles in a face-to-face -face interaction that leads to the creation of connections, empathy, and trust. Then they are led back to town for a revelation. As the after at the town supermarket where everyone passes through, a mural is revealed painting the map of the island and the parts of the community. It serves as a long-term interactive reinforcer available to anyone interested in the cause of the island. Here, with post-its and other materials, actors will be able to answer the monthly question that encourages them to reflect upon the island and their place in it, and to make small steps toward their goals and make those steps public. In a way, it creates pressure and motivates others to act and share as well including the board as they have their own space on the map to share their actions and reflections, making them a part of this collective action at level with the community. Many of the topics will become conversation, which moves the town. This proposal is based on two behavioral levels, emotional appeal and social influence through a collective construction, keeping in mind elements related to social psychology. In terms of equity, the tool is accessible to everyone, including non-residents and those who did not attend phase one and wish to show, show support and encourage others and understand. Also, it is placed in a convenient day-to-day -day location. Thank you. All right, thanks, Paramo. We are now going to go to our second team, which is the Sustainabees. We are the Sustainabees, and what do we know about the residents? We know that part-time residents are difficult to reach, and there are limited services on the island. So one pharmacy and one school and one supermarket that all attend. Residents have an emotional 
no relationship with water activities, and this is a motivation together with the concern with marine pollution. But despite of the sense of community, water problems are still seen as political issues because of their lack of trust in the town born to act. The solution we found is a campaign called You Don't Need to Test the Water Before Taking Action. The meaning is you don't need to judge it too much before taking action. And the, main, the end is to increase trustness in the government. Uh, the campaign of future ambassadors called the watchers who are residents who have already renovated their SEPT system to talk about improvements in their life quality. They will be recorded video testimonials to be featured in social media and they will also be invited to speak in a public event at the school. The campaign includes electronic totems located in grocery shop and the pharmacy with a touchscreen, keyboard and a basket with few gifts. The gifts are a label pin and a car sticker who, who take the pledge. The screen, the totem is you show the, a video from the ambassadors and also the professionals from the fishing and tourism concern about the impact of water pollution in their business. In the sequence, you show an online form to sign the pledge, and then a pledge account is automatically updated with every new signature, and at the end, they're invited to take the free gift. You also include electronic call door advertising in a touristic spot showing updated numbers from pledgers counted. Why do you think our solution works? Uh, regarding choice architecture, the totem facilitates decision making, remembering people about the problem and also giving them the opportunity to take the pledge in different moments of their days. Material incentives, so free pins and stickers as a tool of engagement. Uh, totems make the target behavior more convenient and accessible. For different types of media, residents will become more mindful of the economic costs related to water pollution. Social influences. The campaign promotes the idea that hundreds of people already took the pledge, building up the sense of community. Uh, information. The video's testimonials intend to change residents' perception about the importance and the urgency of the water issue on the island. Uh, regarding emotional appeals, the campaign slogan focuses on building trust and sense of pride among the islanders, and testimonials appeal to feelings due to the close relation between residents. Well, about accessibility, uh, we found that 73% uh, of Americans 65 plus are internet users, overturning the idea that most of them struggle with new technologies. Water ambassadors should have different classes and et et ethnicities and come from different parts of the island. Tot and location were decided based on places where our residents go in their day-to-day -day lives. Video with subtitles for people with hearing loss. Totting will feature a bride key bar to allow people with visual loss to participate. Our solution powers an existing local campaign online and offline approach combined so that residents with different lifestyle could get to know the campaign. Thank you from Brazil. Great, thank you Sustainabees. And now last but not least, we have team Nakul Chores solution. Hello, we are the Nakul team and we are going to share with you the solution we have developed for this challenge. Shelter Island is a diverse community, mean age is middle high and political values is skewed conservative. There is a strong sense of community and residents are highly informed and aware of local issues. If the population is segmented in time, there are year long and seasonal residents and in space, the population is scattered all over the island. There is a lack of trust in the town board and there is a gap between residents and town board political values. The population is concerned about water pollution, there is a demand for a community and town board led answer, and there is a shared emotional tie to the island, residents identity is highly linked to the water. We will work with year-long and seasonal residents because they represent the majority of the population. Our target behavior is getting them to sign the online pledge developed by Shelter Islanders for Clean Water. We will use this already developed pledge because an effort has been made to create it and we have found it easy to use. We propose to partner with local businesses that are generally small and family owned and we gather in points like the farmer's market to install spots where there are devices available to directly sign the online plates. We have selected these places as channels because the community is scattered and in this way we will be reaching as many people as possible. We will offer a social proof sticker with an appealing sentence for residents, a strategy that can be both impactful and cost effective. There will be technical assistance for those who need it, but also a promotion of the campaign by community leaders that can be retailers, business owners, or club members. We plan to work directly with these spaces by promoting a community approach and appealing to their familiar ties to the island. These are prototypes of the sticker.
Our solution reinforces the target behavior through a material incentive. We provide a reward for those who accomplish the behavior, but we don't think this is the most important lever because the reward doesn't have a monetary value. The sticker appeals to residents' emotions with a tailored message that is relevant and relatable. It reinforces family values, which are linked to conservative tendencies, and their self-concept as good citizens and even fit their pride of caring about the island. The sticker makes the target behavior visible since you see your neighbor showing off their sticker, demonstrating their commitment to a common cause. Also, choosing to situate these spots at places where people gather creates peer pressure to sign the pledge, also because community leaders will be promoting the campaign. And last, we have used the choice architecture lever because we make the target behavior easier and we reduce to a minimum the steps needed to access the online pledge. Regarding accessibility and equity concerns, we understand gathering places and especially local businesses to be neutral places where residents go, no matter who they are. We will also make sure we select a wide range of community leaders that represent the diversity of the island population. We are providing a simple and accessible way of accomplishing the behavior and we bridge the technological gap that may exist in other generations by providing technical assistance. Thank you very much. All right, you've now seen the three videos and it's up to you to decide who will be crowned the winner. As I mentioned, you're gonna to go to that poll on your screen and vote for the team that you like best. Um, the winning team will be given $500 as well as the very esteemed title of the winner of this challenge. Um, because of our multiple sessions, we're gonna tally all of the votes at the end. So you'll have to tune back in tomorrow to see who the winner is. So we're gonna give you about a minute to decide who you want to win and, and do your voting. And while we're doing that, I'm going to turn it over to Kelly Trott from Imagine H2O, who's going to tell you more about behavioral solutions and water pollution, particularly around ocean sewage. Thanks, Katie, for having me be part of such a fantastic event. While everyone is voting, I wanted to take a step back and go macro on the challenge being discussed. Hello everyone, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Kelly Trott, VP of Impact and Deployment at Imagine H2O, a water innovation accelerator focused on technology. I was actually first introduced to the RARE Center for Behavior and the Environment around this issue of sewage pollution some time ago, and I'm very proud to serve as an Ocean Sewage Alliance Steering Committee member alongside them. Today, I wanted to first provide that brief overview of the sewage pollution problem from stats and figures I have borrowed from my friends at OSA, and second, tell you a bit more about Imagine H2O's role in wastewater and why I see a need for all of us to come together around the issue. So let's dive in. For too long, people have used the ocean as a solution for disposal of wastewater. I've always been like blown away by the stat that an estimated 80% of our global wastewater is discharged untreated into the environment. The assumption has always been, not surprisingly, the ocean is big, it can handle it. But as part of the Ocean Sewage Alliance, we wanna put an end to that thinking and really open our eyes up to what is going on. So let's first get started with wetlands. Wetlands like salt marshes and mangroves are broadly understood to be good natural filters. In fact, we dump untreated wastewater into these wetlands like it is our business. What we now know is that yes, these systems are nutrient limited, but they are being impacted by the wastewater pollution. In the case of salt marshes, after being polluted, they are more susceptible to erosion, sea level rise, and storm surge. In the case of mangroves, they are more susceptible to drought and salinity stress. Now on to coral reefs, which I'm sure you guys have all heard a lot more about. But these are not nutrient limited to habitats, so it is much more intuitive that wastewater pollution is problematic for reefs and are in fact is one of the biggest threats they faced. However, because wastewater pollution is generally invisible, very little is getting done about it. It is only recently that the science is really catching up and clearly demonstrating what we've probably known intuitively. We're losing reefs to wastewater pollution. And finally, I wanted to discuss fisheries a driving force in many coastal economies. Again, a lot of assumptions have been made on the impacts of pollution on marine fish populations because of their ability to move and supposedly get around pollution. But recent science has shown us that the coastal fish populations are extremely vulnerable to, to pollution. Look, 
this information can be overwhelming, but I've always thought of it as now that we have a better sense of what is happening, we can do something about it, which is why we're having sessions like today and frankly, why I'm part of the Ocean Sewage Alliance. So you might be thinking, okay, Kelly, from the technology angle, why are you presenting about this? And it's a really good question. As many of you know, the water world often sits in these kind of silos, and I'm guilty of this myself. At Imagine H2O, we often get pigeonholed into the technology side of the equation. But in order to truly solve or even make progress towards these massive issues like sewage pollution, we're going to need people to come together from diverse backgrounds, from policy leaders to boots on the ground organizations, to innovators, to behavior change specialists, to wastewater engineers, to scientists at TNC. We're going to need everyone. And we're seeing this for firsthand at Imagine H2O. I run our urban water challenge where we award and support urban tech. One of our, and one of our themes is always around wastewater pollution. And what we're increasingly seeing is that technology might be there and might be very useful, but in order to really truly get it in the ground, entrepreneurs need to be surrounded by a supportive and a diverse ecosystem. Let's take, for example, a scene. Asim imagined using robots to reduce wastewater pollution, and Asim took his engineering background to help cities intercept, divert, and treat raw sewage. We funded Asim to deploy his technology in his hometown, Pune, India, to reduce the water pollution in the local river. But in order to get this deployment off the ground, he went through months of convincing local government officials, gathering local data from um, local conservation organizations, and getting buy-in from the plant engineers. But what was quite interesting throughout this deployment is actually what his biggest hurdle was. It, was around, it wasn't around that the technology didn't work. It was really around getting operators on board of using that technology. They were struggling with, okay, well, how do I actually take this and put it into action? So it's just interesting to think that's where a behavior change specialist really would have been quite useful for a scene. And what I've gathered after running this program for four years is that a scene is not alone. The most successful entrepreneurs are the ones that are supported by a diverse ecosystem and working across silos to really get their solutions in the ground. So without further ado, I will let Katie conclude the session and finish things off. That's all I have for you for this behavior-centered design challenge. And now I'm going to turn it back over to Kieran to close today's session. Guys, we made it. We did it. We made it all the way to the end. So congratulations. Um, great job to Katie for the BCD challenges. Excited to hear the results of those tomorrow. Um, and there is also a soil solution search project in Haiti that provides compostable toilets. Um, that will be a solution search finalist that you will see at some point down the line. I just want to put that in your brain so that it lives there. Um, and I also just wanted to thank Kevin and uh, Katie Milkman for uh, that interview, which was fantastic. I feel like I learned a lot of personal knowledge about how to change from an environmental perspective. And you know, from a personal perspective, I feel like I really gained um, a better fashion sense um, and maybe even a prop for my life, um, which is this hat, which I'm totally going to take with me. It's a little lopsided, but kind of feels perfect. Is that perfect? It's perfect. Um, and so I think this is Met, Lab, uh, Met Gala level fashion, quite frankly. Um, as day two comes to a close, we have a bit of technological housekeeping for you. Um, there are two ways to connect with your fellow Hive attendees moving into the next section so that you can meet and network with the people who are also in the audience with you together. Uh, now the first is the networking tab where you can meet your uh, fellow peers one-on-one -on -one for a quick uh, speed dating style session. So those are gonna be five minutes and one-on-one. -on -one. And then the second is called the lobby and that's located in the sessions tab, which you should be able to see. And if you go there, you can just kind of bump into people randomly and uh, you know, talk sewage or dare I say it, talk shit. It's the end, guys. I had to throw in one more. Shit from Kieran, what do you want from me? Um, no matter where you go today, though, we cannot wait to see you tomorrow for the final day of the Beehive Summit when we will find out the results of the BCD Challenge, the BCDC Challenge, where we 
picked out who won the solution search. And um, we'll get to hear a poem that uh, is a combination of all of your comments. So whatever you do, please don't forget to come back and join us tomorrow. Uh, I hope you had fun. Thank you so much.